It's time for our main event, Uriah Grant against Bobby Chez. Bobby Chez, boy, the name has been associated with ESPN for so long. We take a look at what he's been up to recently. One thing Bobby Chez fights never lacks is drama. He made an early bid to retain his IBF light heavyweight title against Charles Williams. A second knockdown put Chez on the verge of victory. But Williams produced a startling turnaround and took a seat on Chez's throne. Chez had a similar scare against Leslie Stewart. After building a big lead, he hit the deck. Chez got up, though, and won a split decision. He went after the old title and started well in a rematch with Williams. But it was the same story. Williams exploited a reach advantage and went to work on Chez's eye. Williams became the aggressor, and the shorter Chez was in trouble. Knowing his plight, Chez mounted a final comeback. But when it fell short, he retired, at least until tonight. What does he have to do to get back on track? Economy of movement. He's an older fighter. He can't burn out as fast now. The right hand's, again, a very significant weapon for him. For Uriah Grant, work the jab, try to duplicate the Williams fight against Chess, and uppercuts against the shorter, crouching fighter. So, can Bobby Chess do it one more time, get back to a title shot? Can Uriah Grant do the same? He'd love to get a shot at the world title. Michael Buffer will kick things off with our introduction. Gentlemen, from the Showboat Hotel Casino here on the boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey, Top Rank Incorporated and the King of Beers Budweiser present the featured bout of the evening. So, let's get ready to rumble 10 rounds in the light heavyweight division. The referee for this bout is Rudy Battle. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the gold trunks with green and black trim, he weighs an even 180 pounds. From Hialeah Gardens, Florida, he brings an excellent professional record of 17 victories, 16 by KO against seven defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Uriah, the boss man, Graham. And his opponent, Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the solid black trunks and weighing an even 179 pounds from Wanakue, New Jersey. An outstanding professional record of 35 victories, 24 by KO against only five defeats, presenting the former light heavyweight champion of the world, Bobby Chappy Okay, gentlemen, you both have your pre-fight instructions. I expect a clean break at all times. Watch your low blows. No punching after the foul. Any questions? All right, nice clean fight. Good luck. That's Bobby Chez, a familiar enough face, back after uh, almost a year layoff. And Uriah Grant, who always seems to be close to getting a title shot or getting the top recognition and always stopped short of that hurdle. We'll see if he can get over it tonight. We're into round one. It is scheduled for 10, our main event. I'll burst in along with the very fine boxing writer of the Atlantic City Press newspaper, Dave Bontempo. The thing you count on Bobby is to see those shoes. Yeah, this is an image thing with him. He wants to make a statement in all aspects of the game. Grant's last outing was uh, against David Vetter, the man we saw in Bismarck, North Dakota, give a pretty good battle to um, Virgil Hill. Grant lost a close 12-round decision to Vetter. Before that, he, he knocked out Manuel Murillo. Before that, lost to Mike Cedillo, also a fellow we saw in a championship match lose to Michael Moore. Good hook by Chez. And for Bobby Chez, last time out was in that loss to Charles Williams. Prince Charles Williams uh, lost in 10, and before that he had lost himself to Virgil Hill in a 12-round match, in which he had Hill down once. He's always said that in the first five rounds of the fight, he comes out like gangbusters and then has run out of gas. So it will be interesting to see exactly how he tries to pace himself in the first five rounds of the fight. And, you know, he, that, that strategy was working for him after he won the light heavyweight title and defending that title a number of times. But it all changed, Dave, when he had the first fight, when he had Prince Charles Williams in 87, almost out, 
but then Williams came back. So this kind of action at the beginning for Chez has to be measured so he doesn't burn himself out. One thing he said this week was, I have to realize I don't have to win every round. I have to win more than my opponent, but sometimes you have to conserve the energy. Do little things and try to steal rounds. And he made references to Sugar Ray Leonard turning opponents and slapping them. Chez using the jab. So far in this first round, he has done what he always does now. He starts pretty quickly. Makes Grant miss with the right hand, and Grant has a good right hand. Really a pivotal fight for both men. I don't think it's an overstatement to say that. They both need to win very badly. Chez made a gamble in coming back and fighting somebody as respected as Grant. No tuna fight, no easy pushover. That's right. Even though Grant uh, has lost three of his last four bouts, prior to that he was uh, really well respected and had some pretty pretty big wins. <laughs> So round one is just about over, and for Bobby Chez in his comeback bid, it was a pretty good one. We'll be back with round two. That's Uriah Grant getting ready for round two in his battle with Bobby Chez. Light heavyweight encounter with some uh, pretty important implications. And Chez believes he'll get the winner between Milan and Harding if he can continue on the right path. One, you see the quick start of Chez, which, as we've said, is characteristic of him. Grant picking up the pace a little bit here, uh, Dave. He didn't get many shots in in the first round, and he's been drawn into a slugfest by the way Chez has come out in this round and abandoning some of his pre-fight promises. Good hook. Left hand by Grant pushes Chez back. A right hand by Uriah Grant. Chez moving backward. Bobby nope. Chez's fight can only be quiet for so long. Yeah, I was just about to say that. It's funny you were thinking it as I was. So, so typical of a Chez fight. There are bursts of excitement. And uh, even when he's winning fights, they're always exciting. And he takes his share of shots. Grant landing a good right hand. Chez's left hand has been down since... He ends of round one, and Grant trying to find out with his right hand. Good uppercut by Chez. Yeah, he's, you can see, you know, Bobby Chez is, uh, really is a thinking man's boxer. He does look for things in there. Uh, maybe some people think he's just a brawler. That's not true. He's the first fighter that ever had a comparison on numbers to tell us. Something about how Williams averages 80 punches around, and Grant is in the 60s. Fighter actually paying attention to a scouting report. Yeah. It shows you that people are paying more attention to the uh, the punch counting that uh, the punch profile does. Chez has landed some very good inside shots after Grant got off the big uppercut. Buckles the knees of Bobby Chez. Wow, an excellent uppercut by Grant. And the hook by Uriah Grant. You really get the feeling someone will go down in this bout. Good, strong jab by Chez. A valuable weapon that's probably underused by him. So round two here, things have really heated up. You see Grant's confidence coming around, too. Being right by Chez, but Grant stands up to it. Again, the jab of Chez, so effective. Round two has been a rough one for both men. They've both taken punishment. A tough one to score. Good jab again by Chez. As he punctuates what was a very, very interesting second round. We follow him into his corner. One easy, relax a little more. And don't pull out. Huh? Yeah, and don't pull out. Don't pull out of it. Just don't pull out. Okay, and there. And then, when you're inside, make them miss. Go with the jab when and you're the inside, body. just push them off. Push them off, step around, like you're doing right. Step in. Okay. All right? 
Meg me miss that I got the body. Grant doing well to the body here, and watch this uppercut. It's an important weapon for him tonight, and that one landed beautifully. Didn't stop Tess from waging his usual fight, though. He comes over the top of the right hand, and you saw his jabs came back well at the end of the round, too. You put him, okay? El Benani in the corner of Uriah Grant. Watch. We head into round three. And uh, so far, it has been very, very exciting. That round, second round, an excellent round for both men. And I'm going to be fascinated to see how you score this. First, let's let's look at the total punches in that second round. Look at that, how close it was. And even though Ches landed a higher percentage, I gave the round to Uriah Grant, and the uppercut was a big factor in there for me in the close rounds. I thought he landed better power shots. We're in round three, it's scheduled for ten. Chez, the former IBF light heavyweight champion of the world, against Uriah Grant, who at 29 is uh, hovering around that top ten. And there, you see, you've got quite even at this point. This second round for Grant, he exposed a lot of defensive uh, liabilities there for Bobby Chez. We'll see if he follows up. there by Chez and the uppercut. Chez has found a home for that left uppercut. Grant pursuing now. Gets Chez caught against the ropes. And you see the reach of Grant effective both with the hook and with the uppercut. Good combination by Chez after Grant landed the right hand. This fight looking very much like the last time we had Bobby Chez on ESPN against Leslie Stewart, a contender. They just nailed each other for 10 rounds, and Chez ended up with the decision. He had to get off the deck to do it. He might tonight, because Grant has nailed him with some big shots. Chez Hart with the left hand. And there again, the reach. Grant working well on the inside, better perhaps than some might have thought. Good hook again by Uriah Grant. Takes the right hand by Chez. Chez hung up on the ropes here, not where he wants to be. Grant showing you a tall fighter who punches well on the inside. It's somewhat rare because he's timing Chez's shots and he's getting his hips into everything he throws. So the light heavyweight division with renewed interest. You can see here, this two fighters going out for real because they know possibly world title shots lay in wait. But right now, Uriah Grant landing big shots with the head of Bobby Chez. There's a half minute left to go in round three. So lots of action here in the third as there was in the second. Could draw Grant with the left hook, punctuating an excellent third round. Watch Uriah Grant use reach on the inside. Short right hand, very effective. And Bobby Chez does not want to be on those ropes, I don't believe. He has never fared that well off the ropes. Round four, scheduled for 10, and boy, I'll tell you what, doesn't look like it wants to go 10. Both men have landed big shots. There's Chez using the jab. Dave, I have always thought that Bobby Chez underused the jab. He has an excellent jab. And it's rare. You don't see smaller fighters out jabbing taller fighters, and that's why it's something he hasn't used as much. Plus, he's powerful. Big left hook by Chez. But it's something he should use more. Grant with the hook. This is, this is going to be a barn burner. However long this lasts, this will be among our more entertaining matches, I can assure you. It goes a long way. It's already got the makings of candidates of fights of the year. I'll tell you what, it's going to have to go a long way to beat uh, Tyrone Price and Kevin Pompey that we had earlier this year. But they are, they are waging an excellent war, both men. Good right hand by Grant. Good combination. He slipped, and there goes Chez after him. A good sign right there. Saw a small opening, and he tried to jump on it. It is Bobby Chez and Uriah Grant. They're going 10 rounds. We are in round four. It is a war. And you can see that 
We're here at the showboat in Atlantic City. Al Bernstein and Dave Bontempo, and this one's going to be good. They might as well just pave that canvas with asphalt because this is a street fight all the way. That's exactly what it is, Dave. Right hand by Grant. They are both landing and landing often. Bobby Chess said earlier today, people were wondering why going against a toughie like Grant. He said, I better test myself. What's the point of coming back if you're not going to test yourself? He made a good idea, too, because in every fight, Chess gets hit. Even against so-called pushovers, it would be a, a rough fight for him. So why, does, why not get the best reward if you're going to fight? Chez, he hasn't done that much, and Grant has been going to body a little bit more. These guys have left nothing in the dressing room. Total all-out performance. Uriah Grant, knocked out in 1984 by Henry Tillman, the uh, Olympian from 84, but since then, no one has been able to put him out. He's had a couple, had some losses, but... Uh, has always acquitted himself well. He's obviously got power with those 16 knockouts. Chez has felt his power. Let's see if he can sustain under it. We'll be back with round five. Bobby Chez always good for a few bombs in the course of the fight, and this is one of them. Good left hook there that snapped the head back of Uriah Grant in a round that otherwise that might have been a difficult one for Chez. We're into round five, approaching the halfway point of this bout. Bobby Chez in the black trunk. Uriah Grant in the gold. That's interesting. Closeness to the fight chronicled there with those numbers. And you know, with the numbers like that, the power shots will have the ultimate say. Both men have landed big power shots. The hook by Chez and follows it up with a jab, and so does Grant. Good instinctive reactions by Chez to spot that opening and land it immediately. Uriah told us today that he planned on using the jab a lot against Chez, and uh, he's been true to that. Ooh, can't be closer. This is excellent ebb and flow in this fight. They both had their moments. And you have it scored even at a draw. This is so reminiscent of his fight with Leslie Stewart. Just the same tenor to the bout. Grant was rated number one by the IBF for a long time, over a year. Never got a title shot. And uh, eventually lost a couple fights to took him out of the title picture. So for him, a strong win tonight, if he could get one, would push him right in there to be a contender. And there's lots of champions in that division, as there is in every division of boxing. And uh, they're all getting more marketable. But this we, is a very good division. Really is. And we've shown a lot of light heavyweights in the last six or seven months. Good jabs by Chaz. And Grant comes back with his own. What a fine offensive showing, really, by both men. The uppercut by Chaz. Bobby slipping that right hand. That hook was a strong hook. I tell you what, Grant has really sustained well over those power shots that Chez has landed. Chez timed that hook off the jab and was right there for it. Grant has to use that jab as much as possible. Try to duplicate the Prince Charles Williams effort against Chez. You know, when you watch Bobby Chez in a match like this, you realize how good a fighter Prince Charles Williams and Virgil Hill are for what they did to him. He had his moments against them, but just couldn't make it work. Good left hook again. Grant just stands there, though. Was he hurt or not? You can't tell. Chez couldn't find a body follow-up to that, or he would have been able to put Grant in some real trouble. And there's the hook underneath. So a controlled Bobby Chez doesn't go crazy now, knowing he has to marshal his resources. But he has a much better round than he did in the previous one. A good fifth round for Bobby Chez. Again like that, and then stay in there. Then I'm going to come in with you. Okay? I want you to hit him when you hit him and move him and do this and do that. I mean, he can't hit you. But if you're going to hit him, and then you're going to stay there and cover up, Bob, it's going to hit you. So the... All right? Yep. You 
got this channel here, not him. No problem. The right hand, you hit him to the body with nice, come back with a left hook. Come back with an uppercut hook, hook and, hook and jab. Still going to fall in here. Took it already? Yeah. This is how you take the reach advantage away from a fighter. The pouring jab by Grant. See how open he is? And Jez exploits it. That's what the smaller man has to do to a bigger fighter. Come on, you're doing a fine. The chant goes up of Bobby Chess's name. Obviously, he's very popular in this part of the country. His odyssey has closely paralleled that of ESPN in the early days in 1980. He was a middleweight then, uh, quite eight times in the first year that ESPN was on in 1980, and uh, went away for a while, came back as a light heavyweight, and he's had some wars in that division on our network, and if you're interested in reminiscing with us on April 2nd, 9 p.m., you'll be able to look at a show called Ten and Counting, which is a one-hour look back at the best of our top-ranked boxing series. And in that fifth round, interesting, Chess still with a, a pretty good edge there. And he landed 70% of his power shots, opposed to 38% for Grant. So a good round in all respects. Some of the steam seeming to go out of the left hand of Grant in this round. He's got to have that as a powerful weapon if he wants to keep Chess off. Slight edge there for Bobby Chez as you uh, have him that last round, of course, was a win for him. And I'm nudging out a little bit in front in this seesaw battle. Chez using the jab again here in round six. Chez, 28 years old, he started boxing at the age of 18, so he's a veteran, even though he's not an old veteran. Grant at 29. Also a ring-wise veteran. The combination by Chez. And then he was able to counter. Dave, he is so much more effective when he uses that jab. He's almost like a different boxer. And you don't usually see many shorter fighters so good with that punch. But when Chez gets down and leans in properly, he becomes a bigger fighter. He gets closer to the action. picks up the pace here. Another oddity by Chez, the uppercuts he's thrown in this fight. More than you would expect from the smaller fight. Now look at here, Bobby Chez, the boxer, counterpunching well against Grant. So he nailed there with the right, but he's making Grant come to him and then counterpunch him. So it looks like we've got a little mini trend going here with Bobby Chess starting to put a couple of rounds in the bank and maybe switching the momentum of this fight, which looks like it might be going Grant's way. Last two rounds, excellent rounds for Bobby Chess. And for Uriah Grant, he'll need something big in the seventh. Al talked about Chess's jab. Look how it gives him the range for this big right hand bomb. Some Bobby Chez momentum heading into this seventh round. <clears throat> and uh, for Uriah Grant, he comes out strong here, trying to take that away, realizing that perhaps in the scoring, he'll need to make something good happen in these last four rounds. <clears throat> well, as we chronicle the big round for Chez. And a good defense for him, too, keeping Grant's percentage way down. And there you see some of the movement he talked about on the inside, trying to conserve some energy and stay in punching range. And Chez going to the body a little bit more right now also. And throws the hook. Well, Uriah Grant standing again on the precipice of a win that would put him in contention and uh, right now it doesn't look like he's got that little extra effort necessary to get it that could change of course any second and he has landed some big punches against Chez but right now he's not it is intensity in this fight Dave, doesn't seem like what it should be what he could get back into the fight with is a double jab and it just doesn't seem there for him 
He's got to utilize that, but he's been slow to pull the trigger. And that's been one of the knocks against him, is that he throws powerful shots, but then he doesn't throw enough punches. And when he gets in against the better opponents like the Joe Lasici's, Ramsey Hassan's, Mike Sidios, David Vetter's, Bobby Chez, he can't get that knockout punch going. <clears throat> Those are the men he just hasn't knocked out. He's got to reload after getting a shot in where Chez can put a couple together. Good hook inside by Chez. Fascinating. What you talked about is coming to fruition for Chez. What, how he said, I just need to win more rounds than my opponent. Make sure I win the rounds. I don't have to go out there like a, a maniac. And that's, he's controlling himself. He's not wasting the energy. He gets inside, he lands a couple shots, and he circles out. A different kind of effort from Chez. And it's an effort you expect from an older fighter who realizes he doesn't have the kind of energy to expend that he did before. Good uppercut by Grant, but he takes a right hand and an uppercut by Chez. Chez used the ropes well there as a springboard. Remember the 1980 version of Bobby Chez, and after that as a middleweight, was a boxer. It was when he became a light heavyweight that he developed that aggressive style coming in. <clears throat> it worked for him very well, got him to a championship and a number of defenses, but then um, failed him in the big fights. He shocked a lot of people by winning the light heavyweight oh, title yeah. on power. Yes. I, I, I never thought he would be able to do it, as many people didn't, but he was excellent. Most fighters cannot move up in weight class and achieve better power, but he did. And here in the seventh, Bobby Chez showing signs that he wants back into the picture in the light heavyweight division. We'll see if it continues. Watch Chez use the ropes like a rocking chair and then spring forward with a big punch. We head into round eight of what has been an excellent light heavyweight matchup. Bobby Chez in the black trunks, the former champion, taking on Uriah Grant in the gold trunks. And if you're joining us late, what has transpired so far has been a very, very exciting match in which you see the punching edge for Bobby Chez. Pulling away gradually each round after it was in Grant's favor at the beginning of this fight. The first four or five rounds very close. But Chez, really starting in the fifth and going through the seventh, has begun to take control. Tells you what a fighter can do when he thinks he's on the lead as opposed to being desperate. Chez is controlled, he figures he can be poised, pick his shots, and that Grant has to come to him. We're here at the Showboat in Atlantic City. These are live heavyweights. Ten rounds. Bobby Chez and Uriah Grant. I'm Al Bernstein along with Dave Von Tempo. And we're happy you joined us for what uh, is turning out to be quite an entertaining main event. Chez just oozing with confidence now when he gets near Grant. Landing a three-punch combination and punching well in sequence. Downstairs, upstairs, and then from across. And these rounds right now, important rounds to Bobby Chez, as important as any he could ever have because a win's so vital for him here. There you finally saw him start to hold Grant a little bit and outline some of the strategy he talked about before about saving himself inside. An intelligent and different kind of a fight for Bobby Chez. Now, three times in the last minute, he's grabbed Grant and thrown him off. Just very subtly stepped to the side. And look at the three straight jabs. Dave, what do you think Uriah Grant can do to offset this movement by, by Chez and what he's doing? Well, when Chez is close to him, he's got to land the double jabs and set up shots, go to the body, and land the uppercut because he's the taller fighter. But Chez has been faster on the draw. There you see Grant trying it and landing a couple. And when Chez gets on the ropes, he gets in trouble. But Grant with an uphill struggle in this round even to try and steal this round because Chez did so well over the first minute and a half. And less than a half a minute left to go in round eight. Bobby Chez may have just gotten three minutes closer to a big win and who knows, maybe a, another chance to move back toward a light heavyweight title opportunity. But he's got six more minutes of boxing to get through against Uriah Grant. He'll try and do it when we return. 
Sabichez's timing impeccable tonight. That split-second decision leads to another big right hand. And as we move into round nine, you sense in your eye Grant's corner. We did in between rounds that uh, there's some desperation. You're telling your man, go after him and get him now. Right hand by Grant, and he tries to unload those uppercuts you talked about, Dave. But Jazz with some hand speed, and the last part of that combination landed. You're scoring. You certainly got Chez moving ahead. Pulling ahead in the last four rounds, and it's going to be tough for Grant to take away something Chez can now taste. You can see it in his actions, the confidence he's got, the rhythm. He knows that this one is his. Good hook by Chez. For those of you that don't know about Bobby Chez, he won the title in 1986, beating Slobobin Kachar, uh, knocked him out in Las Vegas, defended it three times, then lost to Prince Charles Williams in a bout in which he had Williams all but out on his feet. Had two more title shots, couldn't make it against Hill and again against Williams, and now he's back in for another shot. Throughout the 80s, consistently one of the best fans, fighters, and a real class act. Always exciting, win or lose. Good body work there by Chez. And Uriah Grant just looking for something that will turn this fight around. He had his moments in the early rounds, especially in round two, but has not been able to get it going in the last four rounds. The jab, you talked about the double jab, and it set up the left hook for him, didn't it? Certainly did. You wonder where that's been for four rounds because the style set Grant up for that. Grant's accuracy in the last four or five rounds has really dropped. Part of that may be due to Chez, part of it may be due to fatigue, whatever. He hasn't been landing as well. Good right by Grant. Grant has been pushing his shots out. Now he senses his desperation, and there's the uppercut again. Tonight, we want to remind you that baseball tonight, yeah, they're finally teeing it up. We'll be on later with John Saunders and Bill Robinson right here on ESPN, getting ready for the baseball season. We're starting our spring training games on ESPN very soon. On yeah. Monday, and the first one, the Mets and the Yankees should be good. Get off the head. A rematch of that famous yeah. Mayor's yeah. Trophy game. <laughs> <up in New laughs> That's York. right. <laughs> Half of them here in the ninth round. Chess has, in some respects, taken this round off, but he uh -oh. back in front of the field. Bobby Chess nailed with a big right hand in trouble. Uriah Grant found what he needed. Is it enough? Chess against the ropes in all kinds of trouble. Only seconds remaining in round nine. The uppercut. Chess would do better if he went down. He won't go down. He's holding on. All over Uriah Grant. Boy, Rudy Battle took forever to get in there to try and break those in trouble. Let's listen. Okay, Chad, put your arm down. What's that? You're getting hit. I don't care. I, don't, I still want you to you be able to You're me right in the eyes. That's okay. No, That's okay. You're hit by me right in the eyes. No, you can see okay. he's dead. He's dead out there. You understand? No, I mean, I don't know. Let me tell you something. Is it a headbutt? There, they banged heads. Yes. And that is what hurt Chez. But then, of course, Grant took advantage of the opportunity, nailing Chez with big shots. And then Chez tried to hold on, and you see, he was able to gut it out for the rest of the way. Had that happened 30 seconds earlier, he's a goner in this fight. Wow, and I'll tell you what. Let's, let's see if we can see right here. The head's coming together, and oof. That is a collision. And apparently Chez getting the worst of it. As Grant was down lower. Yeah. Round 10, and boy, this has taken on an interesting note. Chez hurt in the 10th, even though the butt was what started it. Grant landed, or in the 9th, excuse me, Grant landed a lot of punches. You know Uriah Grant's going to come out smoking. But Chez lands a good counter punch. Grant wailing away. Bobby Chez trying to survive. And now that big question is over these past several months for Bobby Chess. This round will say, how much does he want to be back in boxing? This is the adversity he missed when he was away. And now the right eye is swollen. That may have been because of the clash of heads. Rudy Battle took a very laissez-faire attitude toward what was going on in that last round. I mean, he let Chess hang all over Grant without really getting in there. And that could have been a two-point round for Uriah Grant, even though it I, wasn't a knockdown. I gave him one. Well, not only could it have been, you made it that way. 
Round 10, Bobby Chess in the black trunks, Uriah Grant in the gold. It's been a great light heavyweight fight. And think of the scoring implications if he gets a 10-8 round there and then puts Chess down this round, a four-point swing and two rounds. Yeah, the, it, Grant technically not out of the scoring of this fight if that would occur, Dave. And he is hitting Chess with big shots. Taking it here in the 10th round. Boy, what that clash of heads did to turn this fight around. Chess coming back with his own shots. That amount of time could be what's left of Bobby Chess's career, or it could be what separates him from a chance to move back into title contention. He certainly has fought well in this bout, but you give Uriah Grant credit for coming back. And this is strictly a matter of will for Chess just to get through this round. This is the street fighter in him. Coming out, he butts Grant there and, and gets done. nailed. Bobby Chess said, I'm going to fight fire with fire and use his head. The bell rang a minute early. The bell rang early. Two minutes early. That bell was early. A minute early. A minute, minute early. Point. Oh, my. What a serious mistake. What a serious error. And boy, did that hurt Uriah Grant. Wow. You know that was an early bell. We'll see. Now, they don't seem to be protesting it in his corner. Maybe they really think that was a three-minute round. Uh-uh. A tremendous error was made here at ringside. There's no question that that was a two-minute round. And you see the timekeeper there. I'm sure he's going to be embarrassed at this. Hey, when that's your only job. Well, a tough one. I'll tell you what, it came at a propitious moment for this man, Bobby Chess, and, and, it, and in truth, it will raise some eyebrows. It will raise some eyebrows. And Uriah Grant's people, amazingly, I guess at this point, maybe in the heat of battle when they don't have what we have, which is a clock sitting here, they can't know that it's going to be a, a short round like that. They should have a sense of that, though. Somebody oh, yeah. in the corner ought to be taking... Thing. Michael Buffer's got the decision. Let's go up to him. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the official scoring. Frank J. Cairo scores the belt. 97, 93. Gene Williams has it. 95, 94. And Jimmy Condon scores it. 96, 94 for the winner by unanimous decision. Bobby Chappie. Well, it's a unanimous decision that will be steeped in controversy as if boxing needs another one. We'll be back to talk to Bobby Chess and see if we can sort this out quickly. Stay with us. A very disappointed Uriah Grant in the ring. Dave Von Tempo with Bobby Chess. Dave? Bobby, an emotional uh, final round as it ends up being a two-minute round. I didn't know if it was two minutes. I knew I had to keep moving. I knew I won. I thought I won seven at first eight rounds easy. I thought I heard him. I staggered him at will. I blocked most of his shots inside. He's a strong fighter. He's not the kind of guy that's ever been stopped by a light heavyweight. The only fight he was ever stopped and he had him on the ground with a heavyweight in... Uh, uh, quick, name quickly, how much did the headbutt hurt you in the night? Well, he slammed me more than once, but a couple of times, but he got me right in the eye, and, you know, you start to blink, and it swells. It causes for a little bit of blurred vision, and he was, and, you know, I don't call it lucky. He was good. He threw. Okay. He aimed, he landed. He threw Thank it. He meant to throw it. Thanks for stopping by, Bobby. Sorry to cut you off. We're going to go down the back. Big Al at ringside. All right. All right, I'm here with Al Bonani, the manager of Uriah Grant. You are aware now that that was a two-minute round. Will you protest? Yes, I'm going to protest. I knew it was a two-minute round. They stopped it early. It's a hometown decision. Uh, he hit him with a lot of shots. He didn't hit him with headbutts. Bobby Chez was the billy goat in the fight. And uh, they saved him. He held on. Uh, the last two rounds were two-point rounds for Uriah right, Grant. Quickly, do you think that was an intentional cutting off of the last minute? I, I don't know. I can't say that. But a whole minute, maybe even more than a minute, was cut off that All last right. round. And he didn't throw one punch. All right, throw one Thank punch. you very much, Al Benani. They're upset. Uriah Grant loses what is going to be a very controversial loss for him. Bobby Chez, though, wins a decision. He may be ahead it on to better things we'll have to see for Dave Von Temple I'm Al Bernstein we're happy you joined us tonight it was exciting we'll see you next week tonight's show has been brought to you by Budweiser Beachwood Age for that clean crisp taste this Bud's for you and by Castro engineered for today's smaller cars and next Sunday on Top Rank Boxing we go up up and away to the elevation of Lake Tahoe and former Olympic champion Andrew Mater. He'll try to step up, too. This charismatic young fighter will take on former USBA champ Mike Cedillo. He just challenged for a world title. 
Maynard will look to move into the world rankings when he takes on Mike Cedillo next Sunday on Top Rank Boxing.